When two full years had passed, Pharaoh too had a dream. He was standing by the Nile, when out of the river there came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed among the reeds. After them, seven other cows, ugly and gaunt, came up out of the Nile and stood beside those on the river bank. And the cows that were ugly and gaunt ate up the seven sleek fat cows. Then Pharaoh woke up. He fell asleep again and had a second dream. Seven ears of corn, healthy and good, were growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other ears of corn sprouted thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin ears of corn swallowed up the seven healthy full ears. Then Pharaoh woke up. It had been a dream. In the morning, his mind was troubled. So he sent for all the magicians and wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but no one could interpret them for him. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, Today I am reminded of my shortcomings. When you sent me and the chief baker to prison, each of us had a dream. A young Hebrew was there with us called Joseph. We told him our dreams and he interpreted them for us, giving each man the interpretation of his dream and things turned out exactly as he interpreted them to us. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream and no one can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Pharaoh told Joseph his two dreams. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears of corn are seven years. It is one and the same dream. The seven lean, ugly cows that came up afterwards are seven years, and so are the seven worthless ears of corn scorched by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. It is just as I said to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt, but seven years of famine will follow them. And then all the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten and the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that follows it will be so severe. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God and God will do it soon. And now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners all over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. They should collect all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh to be kept in the cities for food. This food should be held in reserve for the country 
to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt, so that the country may not be ruined by the famine. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his officials. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain round his neck. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. The shepherds were not the only ones to visit the newborn Jesus. Three magi, early scientists who studied the stars, also arrived after a long journey from the east. They came first to Jerusalem and started to ask about the special baby they had learned about by studying the stars. They asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. King Herod, who had been put in charge of Jerusalem by the Roman Emperor, was disturbed by this word king. After all, he was king. He did not want someone else to claim his throne. But he had heard that the people of Israel were always looking forward to the coming of what they called the Messiah, who they thought would rescue them from the Roman power. Was that the king the Magi were talking about? So he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law and asked them where the Messiah was supposed to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. That's what the prophet Micah foretold. The prophet spoke like this. You, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod made a plan. He called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the young child was. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Then, however, they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod and they returned to their country by another route. Herod was so angry, he did a most terrible thing. Questions 
Question 1. Joseph was a foreigner and had been in prison. How do you think could Pharaoh then trust him and give him so much power and authority over the whole of Egypt? Question 2. Is there anything similar in the way in which God brought both the shepherds and the magi to visit the baby Jesus? On Christmas Day, which is called the Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, remember that Nativity means birth, we sing the Nativity Traparian. So we need to learn how to sing it. Look at the next page. Thy nativity, O Christ our God, has arisen upon the world as the light of knowledge. Therein those who sought the stars were taught by a star to worship thee. The Son of Righteousness, and to know Thee the day spring from on high, O 